international user facility that in the end will enable scientists to make discoveries. And those discoveries are in four areas of science, in the structure of atomic nuclei, in the area that answers the question, what are the nuclear processes in stars and how are elements made? In another area that answers questions, why is there more matter than antimatter? And also in the applications of isotopes to society. So the Department of Energy, Office of Science, in response to the scientific community in the United States, has decided that it's in the public interest to enable scientists to study, to study these things here. And the public interest is kind of important because it will turn out that the government is giving MSU a gift, a grant, to achieve a public good. And we need to keep that in mind, and that theme will reoccur. Now, MSU, as you know, has been in the nuclear science business for a long time, 50 years now. Um, That's the problem. So, so Henry Blosser was hired in the late 50s. He built up cyclotrons. And then over 50 years, we've, we've um, tried to stay at the forefront of nuclear science. And the cyclotron, as it used to be known, has reinvented itself several times. And now the next 30 years or so, MSU will be the host of the facility for rare isotopes. So here's the deal on the public good. Effort will be at the UE National User Facility. It will be designed, established, and later on operated by Michigan State. So this is an MSU job. The federal government gives financial assistance in the form of a cooperative agreement. When the, when the government wants to do things, they can they have many venues. One is loan guarantees, like the car companies. One is they can acquire an asset through a contract. And another one is to further a public good by giving a grant or a cooperative agreement to a university or to a nonprofit. MSU is not a contractor to DOE. EFRIT is not a national lab or is not a federally funded research and development center. It's an MSU-owned and operated facility to further a public good and to support the mission of the Department of Energy Office. Now, because this is kind of a big gift, 550 million, or 450 actually from the government, the government wants to retain certain rights. And that's governed in the statement of significant involvement. For example, if you make a procurement over 150K, the government wants to look at that. It's not that they want to micromanage us, but they want to make sure that we're spending taxpayers' money in a responsible way. The government can direct us to do certain things as long as the cost doesn't increase. And there's a conflict resolution mechanism. So if the government says, do this, we say, well, no, that's not what we signed up for. It's going to increase the cost. And there's a contracting officer who adjudicates the issue. So in fact, the, the rights that the government retained are rather limited. In the ES and H area, it's an MSU job. Michigan OSHA applies whatever rules and regulations we have here apply. It's not a federal job site. It's a MSU job, just like most other jobs on the MSU campus. So DOE selected MSU to design and establish effort last December, and then in June, MSU and DOE signed this cooperative agreement. And the effort project takes about eight to 10 years. And the reason we don't know the exact duration is because you can't presume future federal appropriations. Congress decides about funding every year. And so really ought to be done in eight years, but to be safe, uh, we're saying 10 years, because DOE has this project methodology, and part of it is you need to deliver on time and on budget. And once you baseline a project where you have a defined scope and schedule and cost, you're not allowed to mess with that baseline unless you go through a change control process. And in the current stage, we don't have a baseline. That's why we have a, a, a range for the duration here, 8 to 10 years. You'll see that by 2012, we'll know exactly when the end of the project will be. OK, so NSCL and EFRIP are not very different in some sense. NSCL is a national user facility funded by the National Science Foundation. EFRIP is a national user facility funded by the Department of Energy. 
using the same instrument called cooperative agreement. Right now we have about 700 users. DOE thinks we'll have about 1,000 users. 300 employees will become 400 employees. 20 million in annual funding will be about 50 in today's dollars. So AppTrip is quite a bit more expensive to operate. Um, that's because we have a Linux rather than a cycle term. And we smash atomic nuclei into stuff just like we will in the future. So it's, it, it, that's why it's good that this cooperative agreement, the instrument is the same. We can use the same procurement rules. Um, the construction will be an MSU job with the same you know, features like other MSU jobs. Um, on the way, there'll be some economic benefit to Michigan. There'll be jobs, there'll be half a billion dollars going into the local economy. And then the nice thing is for 20, 30 years to come, every year the government gives us 50 million in today's dollars, which may be 17 million dollars. So here's the effort side. Shown in green is the current NSCL. I should say that this is Wilson Boulevard, this is South Shore here. Um, this is Fox Street here, this is the Walton Center. And, and new construction is indicated in blue. So the um, blue things are new civil constructions and the giant source building here. There's a tunnel which is going to be cut and fill and it's going to be a mess for a couple of years. And this road here, Oak Street, will be part of the lay down area and the parking lot where maybe there'll be a music school later on or not. But, um, so this is a lay down area. Shaw Lane will be closed for a couple of months so we've got to coordinate with you know, football and things like that. Um, this is basically a shaft with an elevator. We need to be mindful of folks wanting to sleep here at night and maybe coordinate that possibly with the renovation of McDonald's Hall. That's now the other nice thing is with the 2020 plan, this will all be restored you know, 2016 or so to let it become what it ought to look like in 2020. Um, so the amount of hope that the bridge is built now, there's this triangular piece of land. Um, and that's going to be our staging area for spoils. That has a name, and I forgot the name. So if you go, no, not, not the, it's, it's on the other side of Mount Hope. So if you go down Mount Hope on the left, past the bridge, south of the woods, there's, this, and then the, it's, there's, the, there's the railroad on the north side and Mount Hope on the south side, and, and you know, farm lane on the east. So that triangular piece of land is going to be the staging area for the spoils. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Hey, uh, Dr. No, you do. Hagedorn hmm? and uh, Park. Hagedorn and Mount Hope. Hagedorn and Mount Hope. Yes, sorry. It's Hagedorn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there needs to be somebody's... Uh, there's, it's a staging area now, I think, for the railroad folks. Anyways. Okay, so here's another view of the construction. This looks like some interference with Wilson here with the 60-inch sewage line, but that's an optical illusion because the way it's drawn, so this doesn't interfere with the road and stays away from, this, from that stormwater and sewage line. When we do the construction, we start out on the front end part here and this area at the same time, then work towards the middle. And while we're working here and here, we've got to be working on this cryo plant building too. That kind of needs to be done first because once this is done, it takes four years to install the guts on the inside. So we want to be done by 2015, let's say with this, we kind of got to start in 2011. We're still building this one. Um, this tunnel here is about 35 feet. The, the, 